Hello and welcome. You're watching Nothing But The Truth. Next week, the odd even scheme is back. But is that a wise decision or a mistake? And what about the exemptions? Do they make a mockery and vitiate the scheme? Or are they essential and understandable? Those are the key issues I shall raise today with former Minister of the Ahmadmi government and now one of its spokespersons, Somnath Bharti, and Professor Emeritus of the Indian Institute of Technology in Delhi, Dinesh Mohan. Mr. Bharti, given the controversy over whether this odd even scheme succeeded or failed in January, why have you brought it back in the middle of an April heat wave? Karan, I am a man from the ground. I have been meeting people day in day out. The success of odd even was realized by one and all. Uh, in my interactions with the people, this, they were all uh, eased. That the kind of uh, benefits which accrued to them, they were uh, very uh, excellent. So you're bringing it back because of popular acclaim? No. Uh, primarily, uh, what, what this odd even formula was one of the measures which Amadi Party government adopted uh, in order to get rid of uh, uh, this, uh, uh, you know, um, pollution. Pollution. This pollution thing which has made Delhi rank number one out of 1600 cities in the world. And you believe it succeeded in January in reducing pollution? It succeeded. Of course it succeeded, but it succeeded uh, uh, to an extent which made us bring it again. All right. Let me get an opposite view from you. Professor Mohan, you have done a study. It's called Evaluation of the Effects of the 15-Day Odd Even Scheme in Delhi. And according to the Times of India, your study says, and I'm quoting, since there is no improvement in air pollution, and the impact on congestion is so little, and in fact, at times, congestion actually increased. There is no reason to continue the odd even scheme other than gaining international publicity. What are the facts that lead you to this conclusion and contradict what you've just heard from Mr. Bharti? Actually, there are only three uh, reliable studies regarding emissions in Delhi one done by IIT Kanpur for the present government one done by us and one by Pallavi Panth from the UK. And what do those studies tell you? All three of them show that particulate, small particulate matter, which is PM 2.5 pollution caused by vehicles is less than 30%. And out of that, cars contribute less than 20%. So 30% is one third approximately. 20, 25% is one quarter. So one quarter of one third becomes about 7%. So if by cars. So if you reduce that by half, at best, if you're ideal, you get 3% reduction in pollution. And there is no instrumentation in the world which can detect a change of 3% when the environment is changing, weather is changing. You're saying something critically very important, and I'm repeating it so that the audience can understand. You're saying that even if the scheme is 100% successful, it can only reduce uh, pollution by between 3 and 4%. Of particulate matter. And that is so small a reduction, you can't measure it. And if you can't measure success, you don't know whether you've succeeded or failed. As far as science considered, that's what we would say. So scientifically and conceptually, yes. this scheme ab initio doesn't make sense. No. Do you want to answer that? See, uh, Professor Mohan is talking about uh, that uh, uh, mathematical figure. At the same time, he's my, he's my professor from IIT. I'm from also from IIT. Uh, I respect but his views. But you're not going to defer to his opinion. I respect his views. But what I'm saying, I, I, uh, I beg to defer because uh, other studies which have shown, which have brought results, some said that 13% reduction was there in the pollution level. Uh, there are other measures which are to be taken by the government, and we have already uh, started taking those measures also. Interestingly, this 3.5%, which Sir said, is, is, is not that, that true. Okay? Uh, once the travel time gets reduced, once the, the number of cars on the road get reduced, once the petrol okay. consumption gets reduced. you're saying the impact on congestion and traffic also has to be added to the impact on pollution. But I'll do that in a moment's time. And petrol consumption also. I'll come to that in a moment's time. But petrol consumption is to do not necessarily just with pollution. It's also to do with the economy of the family. But let's Environmental. For, let's, let's, for Environmental. A moment, let's for a moment stick to the point that Professor Mohan made that none of the studies after the first experiment showed there had been an appreciable impact on pollution. His is not the only study. The Sriram Institute did one, and that shows that of the 10 of the 12 sites they monitored, PM 2.5 went up rather than down. IIT Roorkee did a study. IIT Roorkee study with Professor Kamal Jain says, and I'm quoting, our study does not suggest any significant change in air quality after the vehicle restriction scheme came into being in Delhi. And they add, we suggest other measures 
to curb pollution other than odd even. Now those are three or four different studies all saying it didn't work in January. Why repeat an experiment that didn't succeed? Karan, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't have uh, those, those studies with, uh, with me. I have not studied them. But for me, uh, th that time when this experiment was put in uh, January, there were studies. I remember uh, th th there are various uh, various technologies which were put to study the uh, effect of this pollution uh, 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 against pollution measure which we took. Central Delhi had different results. Peripheral Delhi had different results. Uh, uh, peripheral Delhi is affected by pollution in the neighboring states also. And that is why Honorable Minister of Transport has requested the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, neighboring states that kindly help us implement this measure in full force. Let me put to you the point he's making. He's saying that in fact these studies that you're quoting and the ones that I quoted are slightly distorting the outcome because in central Delhi where odd even was most effective pollution did come down in peripheral Delhi as he calls it where the impact of other states is dominant it may have either not come down or gone up but that's not because odd even didn't work that happened because the impact of states other than Delhi was affecting peripheral Delhi and therefore but that doesn't matter it's people breathe what they breathe and small particulate matter doesn't stay where it's emitted small particulate matter travels 100 kilometers. But what about the point he makes that in central Delhi where odd even was true, most actually. effective, it did come down? No, the, what, the point is that any government which wants to show their right, they have mobile measurement devices during the experiment on the road. No one in the world who looks at these things will accept those results because those things are very small in the middle of the road. People don't breathe in their homes what's in the middle of the so road. So what you're saying is the so-called mobile statistics that suggested that in central Delhi or on roadsides yes. where PM matters had come down, those mobile studies are unscientific and secondly they're not reflective of the real situation which is much broader than so, small localized. Think this way. You, the amount of time you spend at home in your office is much more than on the road and what you breathe in 24 hours is in your homes, offices, workplaces, etc. So we have to take an average concentration of pollutants in a city. But I'd like to make one point. That is, all of us are interested in reducing pollution, especially us who work on it in IIT. There's no reason we will you know, oppose something which will do good. But this is not the right way of doing this it. This is not the right way of doing Let's it. Let's come to the point you made because many people believe it's an important aspect of odd even. I'm now moving away from the impact on pollution to what you call the impact on congestion and traffic. And there's no doubt that congestion and traffic did come down in January and that itself has an impact although at one remove on pollution. But as Professor Mohan points out, it has an impact on ambient pollution immediately in the vicinity of the road not on the general pollution in the city which is where we live. So even though I concede the point that there is an ambient pollution impact that is important, it's not significant enough to justify the scheme coming back. Karan, uh, the nitty gritty of this entire formula, that, that needs to be uh, seen uh, after having received uh, inputs from the residents, after having received inputs from the uh, scientists and the uh, environmental scientists, environmentalists. Uh, are our understanding after hearing each and every uh, each and every stakeholder in this has helped us understand it better and we have believed we are of the belief that this does help and this help may not be of the kind which would uh, 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 you know remove pollution from uh, uh, delhi but i mean for good but it does help uh, to a great extent so you're saying to things. One, you're taking a comprehensive view where everyone's input has been taken on board. And secondly, even if the impact on pollution is not dramatic, the situation in Delhi is such that even a small improvement is welcome because pollution levels are so dangerously high. Yes. In other words, yes. we mustn't sneer at small improvements. They may be necessary improvements. At the end of the day, uh, Karan, uh, public transport to the last mile has to be made available by the government on which the government is working hard. Absolutely, but I'll come and to that. that would help. I'll come to that in a moment's time. Let's for a moment stick to this question about ambient impacts on pollution as a result of congestion and traffic coming down. Your own study, if it's correctly reported by the Times of India, says that car flow rates decreased between 7 and 9%. Yes, we've done the only and comprehensive. To add, and to add to that, the School of Planning and Architecture found that vehicle speeds increased from 15 to 26 kilometers per hour, both combined means there was an impact on traffic and congestion that would have had an indirect impact on pollution. Now you may be right, it's only ambient, 
no, no, given, no, no. But given, Karan, given the I think high I... levels of pollution, even that surely no, is Karan, welcome. That's his point. No, there's another point. Unless, see, there's no easy way of measuring speed. The way we did it is we have taken API measures, which is point to point so you, average. So you're speed. disputing the school of planning That's and architecture. Right, yes, and we have taken 35 roads. So leave speed out of it then. Leave speed out of it. No, leave speed out of it. I'll tell you why. Yeah. The point I'm making is not speed related. The point I'm making is even if the reduction because of the reduction in congestion is only on ambient pollution on the roadside and not on general pollution, but that's what surely I'm even that is sufficient. No, the, the point is that this is not, everyone thinks these are static things. Oh, 50% cars will come down. Actually, 50% didn't come down. It came down by 30% because 20% of the ro cars on the road were the wrong number but every day. Let me reverse that. Let Even if it's only 30% okay. and not 50, just, why is that not sufficient yeah, for repeating I'm it? I'm just coming to that. This came down that because we have measured flow on roads. So car flow came down by about 15% on roads. That's the number of vehicles per hour. But the number of motorcycles increased by 20%. The number of buses did increased by 10%. Did that more than make up for the decrease? And the number of three-wheelers increased by 10%. So are you saying that the end result... So was People, that whatever cars reduced yes. was more than made up by three wheelers and two wheelers going up? It has to happen. Because if okay. people travel, more buses come, bus engines are much bigger than car engines. Therefore, so you're wheelers, saying you're saying that far from the net result being a reduction in ambient pollution on the road, the net result was an increase in ambient no, pollution. No, maybe even doubt. No one can measure it. At best, doubt. At worst, an increase, That's but right. no one can measure it. That's right. And therefore, you conclude it's not worth repeating because the scheme. You see the and, and therefore, you conclude it's not worth repeating well, the scheme. Yeah, one more thing, yes, it's not worth repeating the scheme because nowhere in the world has it made a difference in the long term. It has made people corrupt. They buy second-hand cars. They buy more motorcycles. And if motorcycle use increases, the number of deaths in Delhi and paralysis will increase. What about that point that nowhere in the world has it succeeded? A people become corrupt and they buy second cars, although I'm not sure whether buying second cars is proof of corruption, but that's his interpretation. Also, motorcycle use increases. Motorcycle use increasing means more severe accidents, more deaths. The end result is greater misery rather than improvement. That's the point he's making. See, I, I, that's why in the beginning itself I said, a man from the ground. I keep it in, just now, I'm coming from a community uh, meeting of Sarvode in Clay, one of the post colonies of South Delhi. There I asked that I was going to your show. And I asked that, uh, how many of you really want to go for odd even? Barring one person, everybody raised hand. So well, this is what I said at the beginning. You are restoring it because of popular support and pressure. People, practicality. People's understand. People's court is the best court. Okay. And see, the, 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 in fact, I don't know about the, uh, uh, I don't have the study this, this moment before me. How, how did it uh, uh, you know, take place in other countries? But in my own Delhi, where we had this experiment for the 15 days, everybody was against it. In spite of that, we did it. Internationally, it has been recognized. And now you're saying everyone in Delhi is for it, which is why you're repeating it. We are repeating it for two reasons. Well, you just One, said those. Of course, but then for two reasons. One, it does, it did reduce pollution to an extent and possible. Secondly, and secondly, people are demanding it. Okay. People want it to happen. Let's then move beyond the question, is it wise or is it a mistake to repeat a scheme? Clearly, Professor Mohan is not convinced by your answer. He believes it didn't succeed the first time around. And clearly, Professor Mohan also would say that even if there's popular demand, that demand is not a scientific demand. That demand is based upon a misunderstanding. But, but Professor Mohan did the not agree with the School no, of Planning the, the, Architecture no, the, 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 the issue is, they say, I'm a man on the ground. You know, I don't live in space. I am also a man on the ground. I also talk to people. The large number of people who are so upset. Let me give you one example. Very quickly, because I want to yeah, move very on. Very quickly. Now. So one person tells me, he says, because I can't come back before eight o'clock, I sit in the parking lot of my office and drink from five to seven thirty. Now, <laughs> the, the <laughs> issue is that we can't. This is gabel. I understand why. Repeating. Why force a person to have to do this? Worse yes. still, after he's drunk for two yes. and a half hours, he's probably drunk and can't drive. But let's now come to the second part of our discussion, which is to do with the exemptions. Once again. You're introducing that scheme, but you're exempting women drivers, you're exempting two-wheelers. The problem is two-wheelers contribute 34% to vehicular pollution compared to cars that only contribute 10%. Secondly, according to the Hindu and the Hindustan Times, there are 5.8 million two-wheelers compared to just 2.7 million cars. So the worst polluter, the two-wheeler, is exempted. The smallest polluter, the car, is actually not. And that means that you're simply going to add to the misery of people as passengers without doing anything very much for the problem of pollution. 
current two things. See, uh, 5.8 million scooters, two wheelers. Not every two wheeler is on the road. There are many two wheelers there lying parked. Well, not every unused. car is on the road either. That Ma argument major, works both ways. When you compare the two, scooters remain parked more often than cars. Car, car, cars possibly are in use more uh, uh, as compared to How scooters. How do you know this? I mean, it sounds uh, my me practical. As if, it's an, uh, my it practical sounds to experience. me as if you're making it up. But, 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 you're but, making it but, up. But, 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 but you're making it second up. Thing, second thing. And you're smiling. Second thing. Second thing which I want to bring, bring to your... Uh, you're uh, a good politician. One, if you don't have the facts, make no, them up. <laughs> one thing. Second thing. See, uh, uh, path of least resistance. You need to make it comfortable. No, if the ah. one, one second, one second. One, 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 the resistance from part of the resistance to great no, 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 the Aam Aadmi no, Party. No, 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 no I think we'll, we, we will have made Delhi uh, a pollution free. Unfortunately, that day is a long way off. Now, unfortunately, again, the exemptions this time round are going to be greater than last time because the no. Deputy Chief Minister has already tweeted that the government is seriously considering permitting cars with school students wearing a school uniform to actually ply the roads in defiance of the odd even stipulation. Now, that may be understandable because schools are on and people have to get their children to school and get them back. But that is another exemption, presumably, that will vitiate the scheme, won't it? Actually, I, I really don't care because it doesn't work. So let them allow anyone on the road as far as cars are concerned. But the point is, if the Ahmadmi party is saying 80% of people support it, then why not make it the same for two-wheelers also? So there's something funny going on. Because 80% of people support it, stop two-wheelers also. And by the way, of that 80%, two-wheeler users will be much greater in then number car, than car users right. because there are more two-wheelers. So there's something wrong, either in 80% or in the policy. This is very interesting and he's picked up something I should have picked up. If 80% of people want the Audi even back, the percentage of two-wheeler users there is much greater than the percentage of car owners and therefore why not ban two-wheelers too because they must be in favor. First time we learned many lessons when we had this uh, formula in place in Delhi. Now we're learning lessons. We are a government which adopts lessons mm. the problem and is then does bring learning, into action. Your problem is you're learning lessons at the cost of the inconvenience you're inflicting had, had, it been in, had it been Had it been inconvenience, then people would not have supported well, it. No, hang on a second. What about his point? If people 80, it. But what about his point? If 80% want it back, how come you're not banning two-wheelers as well? Because 80% would include many more two-wheeler owners than car owners. By your own logic, two-wheeler owners want it banned, therefore as, ban as, two wheels as well. As I said in the beginning, that we do not want to make it uh, uh, inconvenience <laughs> to people. The moment we bring last mile connectivity to those colonies which are far off the, the, the main public transports, we will surely be. Let's, let's, come back, that. let's come back to the exemptions that vitiate the scheme. I've already pointed out that if cars with school children wearing uniforms are exempted because they have to get to school, that exemption entails further exemptions. Because what happens to a father who drops his child at school? He has to get back, so he has to be permitted to come back. What happens in the afternoon when he wants to pick up his child? He has to get there, so he has to be permitted to get there. So if you permit parents who are male to drive because their children are going to school, then the exemption is much wider than you are suggesting. This is going to be the thin end of a very wide wedge. No, I see there, there are practical difficulties which need to be understood. Are For the first time, a government did go to the people. We had had 272 meetings with the people mm. of Delhi in which we had collected but that's not suggestions. answering my question. Suggestions, because see, no, no. at the end of the day, your, 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 is this, your, is this idea of exempting not, cars with children wearing uniforms see, an see, idea I, from the people? I am, I am indebted to my people. People's will is supreme. If they want it so, we do it so. Well, just a moment. We do it so. Not, just a moment. Just answer one question for me. Did this idea of exempting cars with children wearing school uniforms come from the people? Yes. Okay. In which case, answer my fo following question. If you're going to exempt that category, then you have to exempt the father who comes back from dropping the child. Because otherwise the guy can't come back. And you have to exempt him in the afternoon when he goes to school to pick up the child. Otherwise the child can't come back. Therefore, this one exemption entails several further exemptions. It becomes a cascading list of exemptions. No, I do agree to an extent. Why I'm saying that the, this was a major problem with the, with the people. They wanted their children to be dropped. Uh, uh, this, this formula to, uh, uh, should not have come in their way. And that's why it was incorporated. Your, your, your suggestions possibly 
will uh, uh, make us incorporate something else. Another problem they face is the fact that this time around when schools are happening, they won't get access to the 366 school buses they used in January. And the Hindustan Times separately has reported that they need a further 2,500 additional buses. And so far, it said, only roughly 500 have registered. So they could be something like 2,000 short there as well. If they don't get the requisite number of buses on the road, will this scheme succeed a second time around? Or will that itself also ensure inconvenience to the point of failure? Actually, our experiences, whenever we do such things, it's a very dynamic situation. People learn. The more you do it, the more the people learn how to subvert it. For example, then, because one million people are more intelligent than three legislators. <laughs> And so, so, but you're saying something you're very interesting yes. that in fact the experience of the Delhi people will lead to the subversion of the scheme, Precisely. not its success. No. In other words, you're saying, contrary to him, that people don't want it to succeed, they don't actually want it back, they'd like to see it fail, and they'll do their best to make it fail. The number of people I know who have two number plates, who got other things done, two is not supplied. Plates? Yes. And so that is technically totally illegal. Precisely. Don't name that's them. What, uh, Don't no. name them. You'll get them into trouble. <laughs> but that's, this is people in every country do this. All right. Let's come to the last concern. In January, when you believe it succeeded, although I have to point out many people believe it didn't, the weather was on your side. It was cold. People didn't mind waiting for hours for transport. And secondly, they didn't mind walking long distances because the end of journey connectivity in Delhi is awful. Now, it's not just summer. We're going through an unaccustomed heat wave in April. People will not like to get onto hot, sweaty, crowded buses. And secondly, that end of mile connectivity absence means a long walk when you've got to what you think is your destination and you're still two miles short. They're not going to want to walk in the heat. The weather is against you this time around. We have got, we, we understand that, we have got 600, uh, already 600 new buses. But you, you need something like 2,500. What I'm saying that we are learnings in the first uh, uh, attempt on this 15 days of uh, anti-pollution measure or even formula we have incorporated that in fact that time many buses cut one second but, one, but one, you one. didn't have many the weather, buses you didn't have the weather to incorporate now you've got a different weather situation what about that see the the, the weather situation would not be coming in our way much because of the buses which we have brought on on roads they are, they, they, they they'll be there to take care of such concerns so let's let's not jump. In fact, the first for current, if you recall, you're saying the heat doesn't matter to people even when they have to walk two miles at the end of the, the journey. We, we are already working on that. Last oh. mile connectivity, oh. buses. See, various. You mean, you, you mean to say you've solved the Just end of journey connectivity problem? Not that much. Naturally, not that much. So people still have working to, on so that. So people still have to walk in the but, heat. But those buses are available. We'll be surely working on uh, uh, specific complaints areas where we make the buses but more. Actually, I don't understand what you're saying. No. Before I come to you, I don't understand what you're saying. Repeatedly you said things will improve when the end of journey connectivity happens Correct. and you agree that hasn't happened. Yet at it the same time, yet to, to that extent. What do you mean to that extent? Surely, see. Who wants today, to walk even today, a mile in today, this heat? Today, today, see, today we do not have that, that paraphernalia available to address that concern 100%. The whole thing hinges on the meaning of the word that. You're making that seem like a very small difference. I'm suggesting to you that that is a huge gap. Karan, our meetings, two, 222 meetings, that in that overwhelmingly people supported yes bring it back and they wanted to bring it back then in march itself all right we are bringing Mar april now let me put this to you yeah. and this will have to be the last question on this show is weather and temperature a middle class or even elitist concern that for the poor who anyway are battling the heat it hardly matters whether the end of mile connectivity in summer is more difficult to take than the end of mile connectivity in January. Is this just a middle class elite no, concern? No, it's terribly important, especially in hot countries. Our colonies are too large. You cannot take a per person to the bus because the colony is one kilometer by one kil kilometer, for example. And that one kilometer walk in April in, in a heat And the wave bus does not go inside the killing. colony. And number two, you see, when more people can't use their cars, as I said earlier, they will use more three wheelers the correct number car will do more trips. These are dynamic situations. It's not a static thing. You stop some people so the other cars hang around. So if there's only one car to use, it'll do two trips. First it drops the husband, then the husband and the wife goes there. So it's not as if you're reducing it dramatically. <laughs> you're just changing the form of That's pollution, right. but not the quantum of no. pollution. All right, gentlemen, let's leave it there. This one, is a very, very point interesting debate. Miss. Very quick, because in, about 10 in seconds. In addition to that, the number of, the frequency of metros are going to be increased, all right? So that so the, problem, the problem is getting to the metro and the second problem is getting from the metro to where you want to go because metros are very, very far away from where most people live. But let's leave it there. 
we've got to the end of what is a fascinating discussion and debate. The one thing that is for certain is this scheme is being repeated. It will be starting on the 15th of April unless, of course, the government has a change of heart. And we'll know very quickly whether the second experiment was a success or a terrible mistake. My thanks to both of you for joining me. Thank you. And there we end this particular episode. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Good night. Thank you.